Hi, my name is Dr. Adam Bordosi, and in today's case, I'm going to demonstrate the utility of transcranial Doppler monitoring during the treatment of venous malformations with sodium tetradecyl sulfate, or STS. A patent foramen ovale was detected in the patient just minutes prior to the case, further underlining the importance of using TCD during the intervention. STS administration into the lesion is an effective way of treating venous malformations. Since STS causes endothelial damage and thrombus formation, when carried by the blood into the cerebral arteries, it can have deleterious effects. Therefore, TCD monitoring is indicated during sclerotherapy with STS. Importantly, an article points out that there is a higher prevalence of a right-to-left shunt in patients diagnosed with diseases of the veins. Since the treatment of these diseases often involves the injection of a sclerosing agent, TCD becomes an essential tool for detecting right-to-left shunt. Also, to monitor the patient during sclerotherapy to identify any possible embolization immediately. The patient is a 26-year-old female with a past medical history of a left ankle ganglion cyst and bunion on the left foot. Both of these were removed in 2014. She recently presented with left foot swelling and pain, especially when standing for multiple hours. Physical examination revealed a hyperkeratotic papule in the first interdigital web space on the left foot and skin color papules in the region of the third and fourth toes. The toes on the left foot were also shorter than those on the right, and engorged veins presented on the left all the way up to the ankle. MR imaging revealed venous malformations, and the decision was made to proceed with STS sclerotherapy from percutaneous access points. The middle cerebral arteries were insinated bilaterally according to standard TCD protocol. Intravenous agitated saline administration was carried out to examine whether or not the patient had a patent foramen ovale or other forms of a right-to-left shunt. We can appreciate a few hits on TCD bilaterally, which are the small bubbles that were generated during the saline agitation and reached the MCAs. Since the hits occurred within about 8 to 10 cardiac cycles after the agitated saline administration, we can state with high confidence that the shunting route is through a patent foramen ovale, as opposed to a more distal AV shunt. Although the TCD bubble test was sensitive enough to detect the PFO, a couple of things can be noted that would have made the examination even more precise. First of all, the IV line used to administer the agitated saline was long and no saline flush was used after, so many of the bubbles didn't even reach the circulation. Second, since the patient was already draped for the procedure, she was lying down and her arm was not positioned how we would normally position it during a TCD bubble test. This is how we would position the patient's arm in an ideal situation when performing a TCD bubble test. Also notice that in this textbook example of TCD bubble test, a small amount of blood has been drawn back into the syringes to create bubbles that are more echogenic and visible on TCD. Lastly, valve salve maneuver with the respirator could not be performed because the patient had spontaneous respiration after the induction of anesthesia. Note, however, that the TCD bubble test was still sensitive enough to detect the PFO. Ultrasound guidance was used to identify multiple areas of varicosities along the undersurface of the left foot. Several of these were already thrombosed. The patent varicosities were successfully accessed using butterfly needles under ultrasound guidance. A tourniquet was applied around the ankle to hinder venous flow from the foot. The tourniquet also engorges the venous structure of the foot, allowing easier vascular access. General contrast injection verified the presence of AVMs. Sodium tetradecyl sulfate was injected into each of these access points. We did not see any hits on our TCD monitor. The butterfly needles were removed and pressure was held on the plantar surface for homeostasis. Yeah. 
The removal of the tourniquet was a crucial point of the procedure as SDS can reach the cerebral arteries through the PFO. No hits or hyperechoic signals were seen on TCD. The procedure ended with the application of Curlix and ACE foot wrapping. The patient was discharged home the same day and will be seen for a follow-up in a few weeks. Thanks so much for watching. For educational videos on transcranial Doppler and vascular procedures, be sure to check out and subscribe to Houston Methodist DeBakey CV Education on YouTube.